Some notable games take months or years to morph into cultural phenomena. Mojang's Minecraft, on the other hand, was already so familiar by its official release that the news passed with relatively little fanfare. But does this LEGO-inspired sandbox adventure live up to its accolades, or does the final product leave players digging for a deeper experience? Depending on how you approach it, Minecraft is at once refreshingly simple and profoundly complex. Each game starts out by placing you in a randomly generated three-dimensional landscape, which delivers everything from lush forests to forbidding mountains. If you're not happy with the world you get, you only need to restart the game to get a new one. What you do within that world depends on whether you tackle the free-for-all creative mode, which allows for unlimited resources and faster building, and even the ability to fly, or the more game-like survival mode, which features elements such as a hunger bar and a need to fashion tools to harvest raw materials. While you always start your experience with nothing in the way of resources, food, or weapons, you'll soon find that you can exploit the entire world by simply alternating between your left and right mouse buttons. Left click on a block of stone for instance and you'll chip away at it until it crumbles into a form you can carry. Then with your right mouse button you can click anywhere and use that same material as a building block for almost anything imaginable. And that's where the true fun of Minecraft begins. Depending on your level of creativity or your available time, you can use these blocks to build everything from a humble cave to a 50 foot tall recreation of the game trailer's logo if you're so inclined. While you can keep such creations to yourself if you wish, it's best to experience this creative aspect of the game by participating in the multiplayer server. Servers. Provided you prod through the overly complicated connection process, you can then work with other players to engage in monumental projects that only the most obsessive would attempt on their own. But building structures serves a practical purpose as well. Once night falls, this retro world seeds with monsters like exploding creepers and eerie endermen that attack if you look at them, and your first buildings serve as crude fortresses to protect you from such horrors. Such additions might initially seem detrimental to your creative endeavors, but the added challenge of creating monuments to pop culture while zombies lurk just out of sight makes completing them feel infinitely more rewarding. You can still build without fear of such threats by simply playing the creative mode, but in doing so, you forfeit the majority of features that make Minecraft so unique. <laughs> But if a unique gaming experience is what you seek, you're best off experimenting with the many player-made mods and texture packs Minecraft has to offer. Although the process of installing them was somewhat of a chore, the existing mods offer everything from additional music and sound effects to entire factions that lend the single-player game a more story-driven flavor. When they work, they improve the game's replay value exponentially, and Mojang recently announced their intentions to make the modding process more accessible for both developers and players. <laughs> The survival mode represents Minecraft at its most game-like, combining the Lego-like possibilities of the creative setting with the need to protect yourself from the creepers, endermen, and other assorted enemies of the night. If you're up for a challenge, you can also start off with the hardcore setting and take the risk of losing everything you've accomplished after one death. Gameplay in both cases becomes a somewhat frantic rush to use every available hour of daylight to fortify your structures before sunset. Even so, leaving the safety of your sanctum and combating your foes head-on nets its own rewards. Exploring an initially unassuming cave might reveal the entrance to a sprawling stronghold, for instance, where more adventurous types can find a fortune in rare resources if they're willing to brave the enemies waiting within. Resources also allow you to open gateways to other zones. If you collect enough specific raw materials and build the right devices, you can eventually visit a hellish zone known as the Nether. There's also a final level of sorts called the End, where you'll square off against a challenging dragon before triggering the credits. While it's not the game's strongest point, likely owing to its relatively recent inclusion, overcoming the encounter does give Minecraft something of a determined goal for players who desire one. Other aspects of more objective-oriented games have made their way into Minecraft as well, ranging from a leveling system that nets experience points for killing enemies and an expansive series of achievements. But due to their feeling half-implemented, these features feel like a sideshow at best. Unless you rely on information outside of the game, there's a good chance you won't stumble across much of this stuff since there's no tutorial to speak of. It's a thorny issue that extends to Minecraft's extensive crafting system, which allows for the creation of more than 200 items. Whether it's the torches you'll need for exploring the depths below, or the enchantment tables that provide buffs such as fire protection, each item is made by creatively arranging resources in your inventory within a crafting grid. If there's a problem here, it's that the process of crafting new items is every bit as based on trial and error as it would be if you were tossed on a desert island. That might not be a problem for players who like to experiment, but eventually even the most dedicated sandboxers will find themselves sneaking a peek at crafting combinations on Google. 
Otherwise, weeks or months could go by without you ever figuring out how to make the one item you need to advance. With its ultra-minimalistic, blocky aesthetic in a gaming environment that criticizes games like Skyrim for less than perfect textures, Minecraft initially seems like a visual letdown. And yet, almost against reason, its blocky clouds and pixelated denizens manage to grow on you. While you may stumble across the occasionally glitchy block of terrain or puzzle at NPC villages that seem to serve no purpose, it's hard not to appreciate the sweeping panoramas that sometimes pop up, or the oddly creepy movements of the Endermen. In time, you may find yourself wondering if a game that focuses so heavily on block-style construction Construction could have been designed any other way. But even if you never warm to the visuals, the haunting soundtrack will certainly get you. Minecraft is a quiet game for the most part, its silence is only punctuated by the comparatively unfulfilling racket of harvesting resources or the hissing noise creepers make before they explode. Yet every now and then, a masterful piano and synthesizer score slinks in the background, often so seamlessly integrated that you'll barely notice that it's there. In the end, Minecraft is what you make of it, and that's the beauty of the game. Whether you want to spend hours at a time experimenting with digital LEGO, or playing a hack-and-slash version of Wolfenstein 3D, Mojang's unique achievement allows you to do either and more. While it still has some pixelated edges that leave it feeling unfinished, few games in recent years have done so well with such a promising concept and offered so many opportunities for true exploration. Accept it on its own terms, and Minecraft will leave you digging ever deeper for the secrets its sandbox has in store.